Hi, my name is Arisha Dekrin. In this video, I wanted to show you some tips on how to appreciate film. For most people, film appreciation stops at watching a movie. You go to the theater or you switch on your TV or your mobile phone, film starts, film ends, and that ends your relationship with the film. But is there anything more to it than that? Obviously, there is. A lot of people do appreciate film a lot more than just the first viewing. And in this video, I wanted to show you how I think about film appreciation. First, let's talk about the definition. What is appreciation? From the dictionary, I have three meanings. One, when we recognize the full worth of, two, to judge with heightened perception or understanding, and three, to recognize with gratitude. I picked all the three definitions because I feel all three of them combined would make much more sense as far as film appreciation is concerned. So you want to look at what the full worth of the film is. How much is the film worth to you? Is it important enough to spend more than two hours or are you happy just to uh, watch the film? Maybe you don't want to watch the film completely. You might just switch it off after five or 10 minutes because you're bored. The second is you're judging the film with a heightened perception, which means you are aware of the process happening behind the film. You're appreciative of a lot of things, which I'll talk about in just a bit. And you have an understanding of the filmmaking medium, perhaps, or an understanding that contributes to your appreciation of film. And the last thing which I included is to recognize with gratitude. When I say gratitude, I don't mean you have to be thankful, because when you like something and when you invest your time and money in something, that's when you show true appreciation. So the higher your appreciation, the more time you would spend with the film, and maybe you'd spend a little more than is necessary in order to enjoy your experience. Let me explain that uh, with an example. Let's say you're watching a tennis match. And a lot of people watch a tennis match, they know what has happened before and after, but just, let's just say you switch on the TV and you see two people playing. You might watch the entire match without knowing who the two players are. Maybe the names flash on screen, but it makes no sense to you. Maybe you haven't followed tennis in a while. So you don't know who's playing, why they're playing. You just want to appreciate the tennis match or maybe just spend some time. That would be the first level of entertainment. But you can go a bit deeper. Let's say you know how to play tennis or you want to learn how to play tennis. So now you're looking at the two players and maybe you're looking at somebody's forehand or maybe how somebody runs across the court or whatever and you're trying to learn something. You look at the technicalities of the match because you are aware of things that a general tennis viewer might not, somebody who's not uh, seen tennis at all. You can also take it one step higher. Now you recognize the players. Maybe your favorite player is playing. Maybe somebody you know personally is playing. And that would make your appreciation of that match much higher than somebody who's watching and who, don't, who doesn't know who the players are. Then there's the physical experience. Where are you watching the tennis match? Are you watching it at home on a TV or your mobile phone? You're watching clippings on YouTube. Maybe you're watching it live in the stadium. You paid a ticket. And again, your appreciation for the same match changes depending on where you are physically. Then there's the history. Uh, in, in the case of the tennis match, history could be the history between those two players. Maybe the world number one is playing the world number two. Maybe it's the semifinal of Wimbledon or something, maybe it's the final. So there are matches that happened before and there's gonna be matches that happen later and you watch the film, or so you watch uh, the tennis match in the context of what is happening and that's the historical perspective. And again, the appreciation matters. Watching a final of a major Grand Slam is different from watching maybe, I don't know, two college, uh, college kids playing tennis on TV. Then there's the performance and rewards aspect of it. What are the rewards? Uh, for example, are you so big a fan that you're wearing the t-shirt that your favorite player is wearing right now? Uh, people do that a lot. When, when I used to do that a lot when I watch football matches. My favorite team is playing. I used to wear the jersey just as a show of respect. And there I'm spending money from my pocket and I'm showing a greater appreciation for what is happening in, in the television. And I'm not just a spectator who's completely detached from the match. Then there's criticism. Maybe you know so much about tennis, you want to talk about it. Maybe you're watching with friends and you discuss you know, how good the players are, uh, discuss every point in detail, discuss the history, 
and maybe you have a lot of uh, insider information, or maybe general information, and you want to show off to your friends. Whatever it is, you can criticize the performance, you can analyze the games, you can discuss the games. And that's, again, a different level of perception and appreciation for the tennis match. Then there's a social aspect. Now, tennis being a sport uh, typically does not have a lot of uh, social uh, importance attached to it, but there are some cases, like there, there was a battle of the sexes many decades ago that took on social importance, and it was important for that era. We don't have that uh, any time in the, in the near past, but we might in the future. So sometimes a match takes on social importance. Then you have uh, another level of appreciation where you are a tennis player yourself, and now you're playing the Grand Slam. Now you are in Wimbledon, and it's your match that you're watching. Or maybe it's your competitor's match that you're watching. Your, your understanding of the tennis match is on a very different level from a normal spectator. And that is because uh, you know so many things that they don't. Now again, this is a very different level of uh, appreciation. And finally, the last would be the test of time, is what I call it. 100 years later, is that tennis match important? So some matches tend to be important, remembered, and is in the historical record. Most matches are not that important, not worth remembering hundreds of years later. So you see, even something as simple as a tennis match has levels of appreciation. And I wanted to use that uh, process in film. So I've created a 10-step scale, and just to help uh, understand film appreciation better. It's not scientific, it's not uh, perfect, it's something I've created and I wanted to share with you guys so you can also use it to understand and appreciate film better and even decide for yourself whether you want to spend that much time and energy appreciating something. And you only know that if it's valuable to you. And don't expect perfection in film appreciation. Nothing is perfect in film. In order for something to be perfect, you would have to have a complete record of all the films made from the right from the beginning, the financial data, what happened behind the scenes, who did what, and there is no such database. It's never going to be created. Unfortunately, more than 50% of all films ever made have been lost already due to various reasons. So we don't even know how many films have been made, how many films we have lost. We probably have lost a lot of great films, which we don't know because we've never seen them. So we don't have that kind of record to analyze in depth about film history and about the importance of film. We have to make do with what we have. So my system is an easy way to get into film appreciation without jumping directly into the technicalities. I wanted to create something that is different from what is typically seen in film universities or film schools or other uh, platforms. This is my system. I've been using it to analyze films for the last 10 years or so, and I wanted to share, with, uh, share it with you guys. The first level, the easiest level, is general entertainment. This is for the casual viewer who is just watching a film because all they want to do is pass the time, get and be entertained, and then move on with their life. They don't care about anything else about the film. And the second level, with the physical experience. Now in this case, let's say you like the film so much or the film is so important to you that you want to watch it in a good theater. So you might drive 15 minutes more to watch it in a better theater. So you're going to spend 15 minutes more time. Maybe you want to watch it in the best seat possible in a theater with, the great, with great sound and the tickets cost more, but the film is important, so you will spend extra money to watch that film. The same thing if, uh, if you're gonna watch it at home, for example. You wanna watch it uh, with good sound in a good home theater experience. You're not happy watching it on your laptop or on a mobile phone. So where you are physically uh, would matter. If you appreciate the film more, you would spend more time and more money to watch the film in a better environment than you would otherwise. If the film didn't matter to you so much, maybe you're just sitting with your friends and somebody said, let's watch a film to pass the time and nobody cares about the film that much. You might just watch it on your mobile phone and you're happy, it doesn't matter. But if something big comes along that you're very invested in, then you don't wanna watch it on a mobile phone. You wanna watch it in the best experience possible. So that is the second level of film appreciation, which is the physical experience. Then we come to the personal experience. Somebody, an actor usually, or star, uh, whom you like is in the film. Now, if you, your favorite actor is in the film, you're gonna watch the film and you're gonna appreciate it more. Even if the film is a little bad, 
you still might enjoy the film because your favorite actor is in it. You like looking at their face. You like listening to their voice. You don't care the film is a little bad. Somebody who, is, uh, who doesn't like that actor probably will judge the film differently. But your appreciation for the film differs because you like the actors in the film. It even uh, can go to another level where somebody personal in, in your family circle, your friend circle is actually acting in the film. That makes it even more personal to you. Level number four is history or current events. You follow what is happening around the film. Maybe there's a controversy in the film. Maybe two actors are in love. Maybe the lead pair uh, are in love and they're dating or something, and you follow all the news. You, f you look at the reviews. You want to uh, look at the discussions that people are having online. You go to forums like Reddit or whatever. You look at YouTube videos about the film. Uh, you watch the trailer many times. So you're more invested than the average person because you're, you're following the historical and current events surrounding that film. Uh, history does not always have to mean prehistory or old history. It can also mean that the film has a prequel or a sequel. Maybe you're watching Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. So you've seen Fellowship of the Ring. So you're watching the film in continuation. So you know what has happened before. And you know there's a film after this as well. So you're, you are better informed than the casual viewer. And then you have the educational aspect of it. Most film appreciation courses focus uh, mainly on the educational aspects. And when I mean education, I mean the actual making of the film. For example, what does a camera do? Uh, what does a lens do? What a role does lighting play? What is acting? What is editing? What is sound design? All that is important in this category of appreciation. Now, you can spend a lot of hours, a lot of years learning about this, reading about this, and develop a higher understanding of camera angles, about lighting, about editing techniques. And this would give you a better uh, appreciation for what you're watching on film, uh, on screen. And you can judge two films when you watch them side by side. One film might have the exact same story as the other film, but one is shot better. And it's more pleasing to watch. Whereas the uh, general audience won't be aware of why they enjoy the film so much you, at this level of appreciation, would have a better understanding. And then we come to the performance, the rewards. Has the film won some awards? Does that affect your judgment? Uh, how, how about if the film did well financially or was, was it a box office disaster? Are you going to buy merchandise for the film? Uh, are they selling t-shirts, you know, like Star Wars? Are you going to buy action figures of Marvel uh, characters? How important is the film that you're going to spend money on merchandising, on, on other uh, things. Maybe you're going to buy a second ticket and watch the film again because you like it so much. So this uh, level of appreciation comes down to how much money you're going to spend on the film in addition to what it costs you to watch the film in the first place. And then at number seven, we have film criticism and film analysis. At this level of appreciation, you're trying to put down on paper what you feel about the film. So you look at aspects of the film, whether it be social aspects, whether it be the educational, the camera, the techniques of filmmaking, maybe it's the acting, maybe it's the writing. You pick whatever you want, what aspect you want, and you're criticizing it. Criticize does not always mean being negative. It can also mean trying to break it down and understand how it fits into the whole uh, you know, the universe of filmmaking. Film analysis is another aspect as well. You, I have a lot of film analysis videos on my YouTube channel, you can check it out. And I break down camera work, lighting, so many aspects of film. And you, it, it, you, you decide which aspects are important to you, but you have to have an understanding to this level to be able to do that and to put it down in paper to be able to express it very articulately. And then at number eight, you have social change. This is very important because not many people believe film is a medium for social change. There isn't a lot of scientific data to go for or against, but a lot of people do think that films influence uh, people. If you track the performance of a film, you want to know whether a film is actually influencing uh, somebody. Is the film trying to make you a better person? Is it teaching you good morals? If you're watching a documentary, are you watching a documentary about a social subject that is important to you? Is it sending the right message? All this comes under this uh, level of, uh, of film appreciation. And number nine is the toughest, which is the filmmaking level. This is the level where you are actually a filmmaker. You made many films on your own, so you understand the grind of having to make a film. Making a film is not easy. It was never easy, 
and it gets harder and harder every year. A typical feature film, a 90-minute feature film, takes at least two years of somebody's life. And when I mean somebody, it's usually the producer, director, the filmmaker. At least two years of their life, uh, beginning from the idea, to getting it written down, to casting, to producing the film, which is shooting the film, and post-production, editing, sound design, all that jazz, it takes at least two years. And for a producer, it's a lifelong process because you still have to collect income, you have to think about the legal responsibilities of the film. Until the producer dies, until they have the copyright for the film, they are still responsible for the film. So at this level, when you're a filmmaker, your appreciation of film is very different. I've invested 20, 22 years of my life in filmmaking. So my understanding and appreciation of film is very different from somebody who's just watching films and who are at level one. For them, it's just fun. But for me, it's a, a lot more serious than that. And at number 10 is the test of time. A hundred years later, is the film that you're watching, is it important or not? Is it going to be relevant or not? Are people going to be talking about it? What films are we talking about right now from the beginning, from the silent era? Very few films, actually. There are a lot of great films, some of which I've analyzed on my channel, that people don't even know about. They're not aware about these films. And even if you want to ask them to, you know, you want to watch it, they don't want to watch it. It's not important to them. It has no value to them. And no matter how much you cry about it, that's not going to change. It's going to be very hard to find uh, acceptance. So the higher you go up in the scale, you're going to be spending more time and energy in your appreciation, but you're going to have lesser and lesser people uh, also appreciative of the same thing. So this level of appreciation, where you spend so much time into the future, and you're only picking the very best, uh, that's a luxury very few films can afford. So this is my 10-step uh, formula for film appreciation. I hope you find it useful. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.